The need for highly skilled professional labor is global, and in Sub-Saharan Africa, there is a German-based initiative titled Africa Compt that seeks the most promising African leaders from different market fields to spend a year in top leading German companies and organizations. Within these organizations, they spend a lot of time training and learning and becoming the best of the best. Joining us for a conversation on her Africa Compt journey is one of the pioneers of this fantastic program. Her name is Lucy Wanjiko. She is the engineering director of EcoCycle Kenya Limited, Lucy Wanjiko, and she's going to tell you more about her journey next. Hello and welcome to Sheila Lives Out Loud. My name is Sheila Mwanyega. It's a pleasure to have you on this channel. I hope you've clicked subscribe and hit on notifications so you never miss an episode of the show. We are at Westwood Hotel and we're living out loud with a wonderful lady. Her name is Lucy Wanjiko. She is the engineering director of EcoCycle Kenya Limited. We want to take a look at her fantastic Africa Compt journey. If you're just joining us and you're thinking, what is Africa Compt? <laughs> you're in the right place, so let's get straight to it. Lucy, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, Sheila. Nice to meet you. Wie geht's? Es geht mir sehr gut. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Ein bisschen. Oh, das ist super. Yeah, yeah, ich habe Deutsch gelernt. Okay, fine, let's just go back to the English because now we are on another plane. It really is an initiative that is German based. And before we talk about Africa Compt, I think it's only polite that we find out a little bit more about you. So tell us, who is Lucy? Lucy is a family woman, a mechanical engineer, a sister and a friend to many. Um, I love reading, I love uh, dancing and I love fitness. Okay, yes. you have just put it in a capsule like a mechanical engineer that this, 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 and all these parts fit together in this tiny little capsule and ta-da! Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Now, did you always know you were going to be a mechanical engineer? You know, I was born with four brothers. I'm the only sister. So every time they were fixing toys, and we grew up in the village, so our toys would be made of uh, waste paper or uh, uh, timber or pieces of metal or those... Um, tin, blue band tins that used to be then. So when they were fixing their toys, I was always fixing with them. So it's like it was destined and I used to enjoy it. I was never this gully gully dolly girl. Right. I was just this rough girl with the four boys and fixing toys, going up the trees and in the farm. And maybe I just think it was destiny and it shaped me. I'm sure going through high school, going through university and saying, this is the course that I want to take, this is where I want to go, you got a lot of support from your family. Coincidentally, or uh, finally, my mom wanted me to be a doctor. But deep inside me, I, I felt I was not comfortable dealing with sickness and patients. And I always told her, I just want to be an engineer. So I made the first choice as a doctor, but all the other following choices, I chose three different engineering courses. And so when the results came and I had an A minus, voila, I was there called for engineering and I was so happy. I don't know whether my mom was disappointed, but um, later when I continue, continued doing it, she was happy with it because when I came back from university, I would even help fixing a few things in the home, like the solar panel has an issue. I would be there keen trying to see what can be done before she even calls a, a, a fundi to come and do it. So I believe she's happy with it, although she wanted me to be a doctor. And yeah. she was a teacher, a, a teacher, so she's flexible. I think she moved on and accepted it. All right, so are you the only mechanical engineer at home, or did they move on to someone had to become a doctor in that family? My big brother yeah. ended up being in the medical field because even our own dad was a doctor. Right. The rest, we are all in totally different fields. Okay, now yes. the only reason why I ask that is because for most of us, our parents all had this wonderful image of if my child becomes a doctor, their life will be comfortable. If they take on certain professions, I will have finished my work and I know they will always be financially stable. But life is about so much more than just making money. There's the internal satisfaction and just doing a job and doing a job well. Now, you finished campus, you've got your degree. How did Africa Compt come to you? 
immediately I finished university in 2004, I was very interested in joining automotive. I was very keen on automotive engineering. So the first place I landed was DT Dobby on internship. So I was dealing with parts, selling of parts and servicing of cars. And I continued being in automotive for about, I moved from DT Dobby, I went to Toyota, I went to GM. Then later I decided to shift uh, gear to selling engineering software that is called AutoCAD. That was about four years later in 2008. So when I was selling the engineering software as a technical sales engineer, that's when I came across the Africa Compt initiative advert. And I just felt this is right for me because I was sort of getting, people used to think I was really getting bored really fast. I've already mentioned GM, DT Dobby. I never worked for anyone for more than a year. So I would get in, do something, and I just feel I'm not challenged. So when I was doing this software sales and then I come across Africa Compt and going to Germany where I believe is the home of engineering, I just felt this is the thing for me. And it was a right choice I made because it exposed me and it gave me a turnaround after I attended the one-year program. All right. You've talked about Africa Compt. There are many who are thinking we don't know what that is. So help us understand a little bit more about Africa Compt. And you were part of the pilot program. So what was it all about? Africa Compt is a German statement, but in English it means Africa is coming or Africa is rising. So Africa Compt focuses on picking young, talented, future potential leaders from Africa, people who have already worked for two to three years. So they hand pick you and you have to go through an aggressive assessment like application assessment center, and then you're chosen to go to Germany. Now, when you're in Germany, you have to learn the German language because there everything is in German, the machines, the trains, when you go to the shop, so you get the language so fast. But for me, I actually love languages. So I got it actually in the first three months. I was already able to speak fluently. So after the German language training, you're then now posted to the different companies that uh, you're supposed to be attached to, depending on your background. For me, I was an engineer, but I clearly stated I want to work on my soft skills side. So I went to an engineering company that is called Continental AG. If you've seen all the Mercedes, the Porsche, they come with tires that are called Continental. So I went to the company that manufactures those tires. And instead of being directly in engineering, I was taken to branding and marketing because I felt I had already gotten so much of engineering in my previous jobs in Kenya. And I felt like I need soft skills so that I blend my engineering with marketing, branding. And then if I want to do anything, start my own company, then I will have like an all-rounded uh, scheme person. So when you're taken to those companies, you stay there for nine months. And in between your training, hands-on training in the company, Africa Com, the organizers are called GIZ. They pick you for about two weeks or one week and take you into a class set up together as a group. And you're given themes on international leadership, communication skills, you know, all, all those soft skills that are needed for management. Okay. So that's the journey, basically the journey of Africa Compt. And they would like you to return back to your country once you're done with the program because they want people to come back and make an impact back in their countries. Having gone through the Kenyan system of education and being in Germany and interacting with all these global workers as well with different skills and with different talents, what did you think about our education system vis-a-vis -vis the German one? Actually, I would applaud our education system. The structure is right in place. Um, the Germans have their structure in place and a lot of hands-on, hands-on training. So the difference between us and the German universities, their labs are very well equipped and current. You know, to have a lab that is current, that can do research and proper analysis, even in medicine, it's quite expensive. So maybe the challenge we have is just to have our universities financed to have the current um, technology or whatever is in trending, if it's in ICT, have labs that have current technology. So the structure, I find it okay. It's just that the equipment and the right, resources the is training, what is a yeah. bit limited. Going back to your experience and spending a year away from home, how was that? Well, um, being away from home, of course, is never easy for anyone. But for me, it was not so hard because then I didn't have a family. It was just me trying to build my career. So the only people I was feeling sad living is my mother 
and my brothers, but being a tomboy, it was not hard being away because <laughs> I've always been in boarding school since uh, class four. But uh, what was different is trying to adjust. The German winter was really harsh at the time that I went to Germany and I happened to be in the north. It's called Hanover. It was about minus 15 degrees. So for me, that was like, I was just feeling heartbroken because I could only stay inside the house and keep myself warm. So adjusting to that harsh weather was a bit tough. And um, the food, of course. But uh, I was very excited to be in this fast moving where everything just works. Like you have an appointment at five. So you know, I just need to take the train at 4.45 and it needs 15 minutes and I'll be there at five. Everything just works. It was so exciting and the year went by so fast. Actually, I'm not sure. I really missed home. Maybe I was just missing the nyamachoma, the, <laughs> the chapati, Ukali, probably. And, 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 and the heat during yeah. the winter. But um, it was not so hard. And, and, the, and the program, the way it's organized, you get to have like colleagues and mentors who sort of welcome you and integrate you to the German way of life. And the fact that the first three months we were learning German language, when you speak in German, everybody is just excited to come and speak to this African who is speaking good German. So right. it was not so hard. It wasn't so bad. Yeah. So the year was over and you came back home. Yes, yes. How long have you? has it been since you came back home? I came back in 2009. Actually, I must commend that uh, wherever I was working, when everybody else was coming back home, I got a one month extension because my company said I was doing an excellent job on the project that I was working on and they needed me to continue and finish for one month. So that is special. Every, after the training, everybody must come back home. But for me, I was given this one more month extension. And sort of if I wanted, probably I could have gotten a job, but I was keen on, on coming back home. Mm -hmm. So I came back in 2009. Okay, yes. you're coming back, you've been in a developed world, everything works, and here you are, you've got the skill, the soft and the hard skill, and you're in Kenya. And what did you do next? Go look for another job or begin to think about what can I create? I had seen quite a lot of things while I was out, here, out there. Although I was based in this tire company, I had gained a special interest because I used to really love visiting the parks when I was in Germany. So one time at the park in my town, Hanover, I just got curious about some fountain that was somewhere. So I remember speaking to one of the park attendants, so how, how is this fountain working? Where does the water come from? And they mentioned it's actually wastewater that has been treated and comes back, wastewater means sewage. So sewage has been treated and comes back to make fountains. So from the time I was in that park, which was at the beginning of my program, I got this interest about wastewater managing parks and, and having greeneries out of wastewater. So I did a lot of research despite not being in a wastewater company. I even attended trade shows and trade fairs that were exhibiting wastewater uh, concepts. So by the time I came back, although I was in this tire company, I had a feeling I need to do this thing back in Kenya because when I think of my city, I will come across sewer flowing in a channel. I'll come across a bust sewer. So I just felt like I went out and I found the solution. But now here I was with, with the solution, but I do not have capital. So what did I do? Coincidentally, when I arrived, another person who is an alumni from Moy University, a civil engineer, was also coming back to Kenya after having been exposed in America with the American army, working with waste, being a civil engineer in, in, in America. So coincidentally, he tells me, I'm coming back to Kenya and I wanna start this concept. I want to introduce this concept of machines that recycle sewage back to clean water. I said, I've been thinking about the same thing. So can I come work with you? He said, fine, when you arrive, uh, uh, just come. Fine, I asked, what's the salary? Actually, it was not even gonna match what I was earning as an intern in Germany, but I knew this is what I want. So I said, fine, whatever you pay me, I'm really interested about this concept. I'm going to come and we're going to work with you. So guess what? Our first project was Enashipai Spa. Oh, the wow. Enashipai Spa in Naivasha. Naivasha. It's a project that recycles all the waste from all those hotels. About 1,500 liters every day of sewage changes back to clean water. And it's used, the green lawns you see in Enashipai 
right. is courtesy of reclaimed water. And that was my first project. I was very amazed. I, I did it from the manuals because even the Americans didn't come to train us. But I remember my boss asking me to read the manuals, understand the, how the things will be joined. And I oversaw it successfully. And when the, uh, jam, uh, when the Americans came now to inspect, they were like, we are so amazed. We found only just one thing that had not been done correct, but it's like 99% well done. Right. So just by that project alone, I felt like I'm actually an expert in this thing. So it kept me moving. Before long, I was poached by another company that was doing the same. The, uh, they were actually the pioneers of wastewater in Kenya. So I got another offer, which was a better pay than what I was having. So I moved to them. Uh, I worked with them. I did a couple of projects. And again, I'm this person that just never settles. Yeah. Before long, <laughs> I was out of that company. You were done. And I was poached by another person in 2011. So I worked for them for about two years. I helped them introduce other machines from the US. And not before long after, about two years, I just felt I can do this thing it's as me. It's time to stand on I mean, I'm own. the expert. I'm the one who's been meeting the customers. I've, I've been doing a good job. So why not just do it with me? So coincidentally, one of the suppliers, uh, a German manufacturer that was also trying to sell through my employer, I mentioned to him and he said, actually, I've been hoping one day you will say you can do this. <laughs> and I just felt, wow, so I've, I should have just started this. So I started EcoCycle. I remember I just thought of the name one time in the house because I want to be eco-friendly and I want to teach people that uh, things can be used in a cycle, that you can never waste something. So I thought eco and cycle will make a lovely name and I just made a logo, EcoCycle Limited. And in 2014, uh, the 10th of March, my company was registered. Fantastic, well done. Starting out and venturing out on your own is a whole other kettle of fish. It's one thing to have the skill and to work with someone else, but being your own boss, starting your own enterprise, that's not easy. What were some of the challenges that you faced? I think you know the obvious one. So <laughs> I didn't have capital still, even yeah. after, after working and being on salary. I had just a little bit. So I sort of used a trick. Um, I tried to look for the first three clients. I just convinced them about my technology. I asked them for a down payment, and I was able to procure their machines from Germany, come install for them, and then when they give me the final pay, that's like my first profit that would help me pay for the office, set up computers, hire two people, and it sort of worked. But surviving on the down payment that you receive from the clients. It's, it's, a bit, uh, um, it's a bit tight because when they give me their down payment, it's just enough for me to order the machine from Germany because I was not stocking them, although nowadays I try to stock the smaller machines. So you have to pay salaries, you have to pay your rent because when you start a company, the first thing was to look for a space. So I needed rent and they all asked for between at least three months to six months. When I go to the bank, Fine, I have this great bankable idea, but I didn't qualify. I don't have collateral. They ask for land, they ask, you know, for all those things that I didn't have. So somehow it's been working on this down payment model where they pay me and I'm able to buy, and I try to save a little bit of that to run. So capital was a challenge. Um, also finding the team, okay? This is a bit of a specialized technology. Uh, but luckily, the first person that I found was good and already had some experience. So but when you started growing by the end of the year, you, I had to do a lot of interviews to try and find the right people because we don't have people that are purely trained on wastewater management. It's, so you sort of have to hire engineers that you will come and now do a customized training that is specialized to wastewater. And um, the usual thing that people don't believe, like a lot of people are like, how do you get water from wastewater? What are you telling me about? I mean, there's the yak factor. Mm -hmm. People don't, didn't believe so. But the first three projects that I was able to install and commission, when they started producing the clean water, that was like my pilot that really helped me get more people. Okay. The doubting Thomases, they see, they believe, and then it And goes then now on. it begins to grow from yes. there. Yes. I think it's about time that our financial institutions also would take into cognizance the fact that it's not always about a tangible thing you can touch, that funding people's ideas 
it can be a good thing. Look at how far they've come. Look at the technical and professional skill they're putting on the table to help finance some of these startups because some of them are really quite epic. Yes. And most of the people with these ideas don't have the land or the title deed or the car logbook to give you so that they can get the money mm. to make these things happen. Mm. But looking ahead, looking at the skill that you have, what would you like Kenyans to start thinking and shifting in how they approach our resources and in also how we live. I'm, I'm passionate about the environment. So just the way we live and creating waste, if we can rethink uh, that approach. And I always encourage people for us to care for the environment. It may, it may be too late to start telling somebody when they're already 18 years. Like what I saw in Germany, when from the time a kid is born, they sort of know where do you put the sweet paper, where do you put uh, cartons, where do you put that. So it's more of us as parents, parenting and at home and at the elementary school, we sort of train our young people to care for the environment, not just to throw trash anywhere or just to use things wastefully, just use every resource because resources can be exhausted but if you keep using in a mindful way and in a recyclable manner it's possible to keep our environment very clean and when you go to Europe Germany Sweden Finland it's not about the government keeping the streets clean it's more of the people of, of the, it's a culture it's it's a culture of the people you own it up from your own house to when you walk out of the street to when you go to the bus, everywhere you go. You know, in Germany, if you threw a paper or dropped a paper in the train, you would just get a certain look from everyone that you will just bend and pick that paper. So we need to have that culture of just conserving where we are. Because I think the problem we have a mentality, somebody will clean after me. I think that's not right. We need to instill the mentality from when somebody is born that you look after your own mess and you care of everything that is around you. Okay. Yes. Excellent. Very well said. Take care of our environment. Take care of the lessons we're teaching future generations because they're the ones we're living everything to. Yes. But looking at EcoCycle Kenya, what do you see for yourself in the future? Our plan in the next five years or five to ten years, as I mentioned, we import these parts from Germany. But we're looking at setting up a local manufacturing um, a setup. Uh, so that we can cut down this cost of shipping and clearing and all that. Um, it's a very good technology, but the feedback we've received from most of our clients, it's a bit costly, although it works. We are, we are talking about German quality, robust, durable, and compact. So one of the key steps is to try and set up a local assembly unit so that we cut down this cost of bringing all the stuff from outside. Fantastic. As we wind up, what would you like to say to someone who's tuned in and thinking, I'm interested, I'm ready to grow, I'm interested in seeing what else I can learn courtesy of this Africa Compt initiative? What would you like to say? Africa Compt is a great initiative. I would encourage everybody that is a dreamer, that is a go-getter, despite the language barrier, because some people might think learning German, I mean, German is long words, too difficult. Go for it if you are a dreamer. If you want to expand your horizons, open up your knowledge. By that one-year exposure in Germany, my mind just opened up, and it showed me that I'm unlimited. So anybody that feels you are a go-getter, you are a dreamer, you are passionate, take the Africa Comp chance, it will, it's just, it's a turning point professionally. Most of us that have been through it have had a turning point and we don't regret it. Being a well-rounded global citizen, it's no longer about the country where I'm from. Yes. It's about the country where I'm from, the country where I went to, and what I bring back to the pot because of all my learning experiences. Sure. Thank you so much, Lucy, for making the time to be here with us. I know you're on social media, so we are going to post links to EcoCycle Kenya Limited yes. and make sure that for those who are looking to recycle, to learn, to grow, to be inspired, can connect with you. Sure, I'll be glad to share with everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, you, thank so you. Much. There you have it. There's something to be learned. Whenever you hear there's a call out for Africa Compt, don't be the last one wondering, Aki Sidri Kama Leon Dionita apply. Now is the time because Africa really is rising. Thank you so much for catching up with us. We are at the Westwood Hotel. Be sure to check out my social media sites for links to Lucy, Wanjiko and EcoCycle Kenya Limited. We are signing off now and saying, as always, live out loud in all things. Bye for now.